And that was the thing, is we both want the same thing. There's, no, there's, nothing, there's nothing else. I know she doesn't really desire this world. And I know that what she wants, and I know that we both want to pray deeply. So when you've got that, it always comes back to that foundation. And then it, it's really, really more about the healing that needs to take place. So then when you take it off of that personal, then it actually becomes much, much more easier. It's much, much more restful. It's actually, it's actually incredible that you have the same desire. Hello, welcome. This is another, our actually very first episode of Holy Relationship Conversations with Jean. Today, I have two very special guests, Kenneth Clifford and Nana Bregvadze. Bregvadze. But you can just call me Nana. <laughs> Each week, I am, the intention is to invite new guests to come in and discuss holy relationship. Uh, so far that we're focusing on couples or what we would call romantic relationships, but we will eventually get to other kinds of relationships, but there is a lot of demand for these, these kind of relationships. So I bring you Ken and Nana. Welcome Ken, welcome Nana. Thank you so much, Jean. Thank you. So Ken and Nana have been traveling around the world, sharing A Course in Miracles. They are both part of the Living Miracles community with David Hoffmeister. And they are right now in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I've known Ken and Nana for a couple of years now, actually, virtually and in real life, finally, as well. And that leads me to my first question for you guys. Uh, one thing that I find very interesting with you two is that you came together first virtually. You met, we'll call it digitally, <laughs> before <laughs> meeting uh, in person. So uh, could we hear a little bit about the beginning, how it, how it got started? <laughs> yes, um, I applied for the remote volunteering program for Living Miracles. And um, after some prayer, there were some different teams mm -hmm. uh, that I could join. And after some prayer, it was obvious to join uh, for me to join social media team. And at that, at that time, Ken was like um, over zero, the leader who was leading the team. And that's how we met. Mm. And actually, before I joined the team, we had a call just to, just to get to know each other and get, get to know how the team works and everything, how the collaborations works. Uh, and before I joined the team, we had the very first call. And I think that was the first click so to speak mm. in the mind because I remember at the beginning I was so shy and I was so afraid of everything mm. really everything <laughs> new and I was so uncertain of my English and I thought like do I even know English can I really speak or understand so I had many doubts and then I was very nervous but then uh, during the call it was like I had these moments when I was looking at him and he seemed so familiar to me I was like it felt like I knew him and I remember like instead of having a short call as we thought mm -hmm. we would have we had like two hour talk talking about different things and exploring different themes what we enjoyed what we liked like about spirituality and everything and after the call I remember having this feeling I was like oh I really talked about everything that I really would love to talk about with someone you know from my heart mm -hmm. so that was my my first um like that feeling that connection that does not seem quite personal and it felt mm. quite deep so that was the first connection that we had and then um should do you want to add anything or well, should I continue? well there was there was a previous to that because i was doing the episodes for get real and how she turned up on the um social media team was a kind of miracle 
because what happened was is I spoke to my, my friend Linda came to me previously to this and said oh we've got a new volunteer her name's Nana yeah and what I heard her say was she's going to be volunteering on the social media team right but she didn't say that she just said oh we've got a new volunteer and basically she doesn't know where she's going but I heard this and so then on my next get real episode I saw I saw Nana and she was still deciding on where she would be going. She was like, oh, I don't know what area to, to be in. So she was in this prayer. And then I saw her and I said, oh, look, there's Nana. She's going to be joining the social media team. And previous to that, you've been praying, haven't you, to Jesus. And you were saying to Jesus, OK, really make it obvious where I'm supposed to go. And then in that moment, you were like, oh, I'm supposed to be on the social media team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember like. I remember feeling this like uncertainty. I was like, what am I going to do? What to do, Jesus, and everything. And I really said to Jesus, make it really, really obvious. And the next minute, I received the notification on Facebook that he sent, can send the friend request to me. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was I just that asked as well. oh, yeah. Jesus what to do. And all of a sudden, he sent the friend request. Yeah. And I was like, I was, I was writing to Linda. Oh, my God, Linda, this is what happened. And I think yeah. it's quite obvious. So... That was like, um, like, yeah. Yeah, that was that was really interesting as well because I don't, I've, I don't really send friend requests. And then I heard her name, so I heard about her, and then all of a sudden she flashed up on the screen, and I was like, oh, she's that, she's that volunteer. So I just, it was like that automatic, just like clicking it, and then she was, you were thinking like, what's my next step? At that moment, I was praying, and all of a sudden I received the, the yeah, friend request. So that was um that was that and uh, I don't know if you have any other questions that you want to ask or <laughs> should I continue with the story <laughs> yeah please uh, continue right yeah and I think that uh, what I to me the I don't know the significant thing that happened I think was that then I I, I started having all these thoughts about Ken like like almost like an attraction and I was like, what is happening in my mind? My mind was cluttered with those thoughts. And I would clear and clear and clear. And I was like, it, it felt silly to me. Um, but I reached the point when I thought, okay, I need to share about this. I remember I watched on YouTube, I watched this video about transparency, David's video about transparent communication. And I was like, I really want to practice that. So I just decided to be really, really honest. And I, I, would, I decided to share all my thoughts about attraction thoughts with, with Ken really honestly. I didn't really expect anything back. I was like, this is really silly. And it felt like really embarrassing, but it was like uh, on my mind. So I was like, this is the only way I can clear my mind. So I asked for a call and I was, like, I was so nervous and I was like, okay, I need to share these thoughts with you. And um, I think at the time I was already part of the team and I just shared all these thoughts. I don't remember, even remember what I said, but I shared all these thoughts and Kim was like, yeah, okay, thank you for sharing. And that was, <laughs> that, that was it. That's how it ended. And I was like, oh, okay. It ended and I was like, oh, thank God, <laughs> like it, everything was out uh, basically. But then um, and on that week, later that week, you had the Get Real mm -hmm. show. And then uh, the theme for that show was honesty. True honesty. True honesty. So maybe you can yeah. continue from there. Yeah. So she shared all of her thoughts. We'd had a couple of conversations pre previous to that. And then the theme came for the for the show the episode get real true honesty yeah and so then that day I was feeling really really terrible yeah and I was like oh my god what the what is going on so I had to sit and I was and I was praying and I was really really sitting there and then Jesus came to me and said Nana's been honest with you now you need to be honest and I was like oh my god and he, and I and, and instantly I knew that that was the block and then it was like what's it and then of course my ego kicks in and like what's so you're gonna go on and talk about true honesty and you're not and you're, and you're not being honest so I was like oh my god I can't I can't I can't do this so it was about it was about an hour and a half before the episode so I was like Nana are you free for a call and she's like yeah 
she's like yeah so we had a call and then i shared i shared my private thoughts i said well actually your thoughts were similar to mine and i i'd 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 had similar thoughts of attraction towards you and then that and then and then that was that and then after that we started joining and then from that it was like we really took on board that true honesty didn't we we said wow, maybe this is all about being really, really transparent and, 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 and truly honest with one another. And then that's how, that's how it really began. We were like, okay, we're just going to share all of our thoughts, no matter what they are. And then that's how, that's how the digital seeming relationship really, really began yeah, through I'm that. <clears throat> we never even called it a relationship because it's not, it's not quite typical. Like you just have calls yeah. every day and you just share all of your th thoughts. And it's mm -hmm. like, to me, that was so new because um, like I, I was not used to sharing honestly how I felt or or even holding the space. Mm -hmm. So that was so, so new. But I feel like that became like a foundation and that um, brought um, the trust, I think, you know, mm -hmm. a relationship. And mm -hmm. I think that was like, yeah like a foundation that we can rely on and we, we can always come back to yeah. yeah yeah that was a that was like a real big clearing yeah that was the whole the whole thing to be absolutely completely honest with how we were feeling <clears throat> and then like we had a foundation to always go back to mm. so it's like okay what's happening so if there was something happening we could go okay what's not being said and then we could then we could share those thoughts mm. Yeah, so at back at that time, this is always this question keeps coming up for me. It's what does what is a relationship? Like when do you, like we are in a relationship? It, there's not like a it's just a natural, we're all relating. We all it just means relating. So in the beginning it was more just there's attraction and let's agree to do to to share like an agreement on how you're how you're going to relate basically and that's that's relationships so at, at this point you didn't know if you were ever going to meet in person really and that was that wasn't a, an issue for you guys it was more like just stay with the with the daily I think uh, after you shared your thoughts that oh mm. I actually I have the same thoughts attraction mm. and everything after that call I was like oh okay but mm -hmm. I didn't really make any any conclusion like oh now mm -hmm. we are gonna have a relationship we never actually mm -hmm. spoke about it we just went along with it with mm -hmm. the flow okay do you want to have a call and then we had a call and then again and again and again we never actually called it a relationship mm -hmm. so that, that was that was interesting as as well and in terms of, um, I think Ken was more clear. I was, I think I had more um, defensiveness in in me. So I was really, whenever this topic of relationship would come up, I would, I would be like freaking out. So I think Ken was more clear about it. And I think at the beginning, we don't, didn't really have that pressure or anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to meet. Mm -hmm. And it was okay as us being the way um, mm -hmm. we were, but then um, I think it that kind of pressure was coming mm. in actually, mm. and over and over again we had to come mm. to the present moment and to say, actually we do not know if, mm. if we will ever meet. So let's use this moment for honesty, mm. and let's use this moment for the healing of the mind. Mm. So we had to come back to that prayer over and over and over again. Mm. So that was like an agreement here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I, I think for me it was like prayer. And um, knowing that really, for me, it's really not about relationships with people in that sense. It's really not about that. And it was like something much more deeper. And I really felt like Jesus was bringing us together. It was it was kind of like obvious for me, but it wasn't completely and utterly obvious for Nana. And so there were there were there were two there, there were two things going on. Um, I felt like there even I was we were praying last night just before the um the episode and I start from from today and I said like when I went into my mind there was something there that I couldn't really describe the reason why this was happening and it felt to me like yes this is a, this was a direction from Jesus and then I was very very clear on that 
the the whole the, the, the whole way. And it felt like there was a there, there was a bigger there was a bigger purpose that I can that, that I can see. And I felt like somehow there was a there was a purpose for us to be together in some way at that time. And also there was some sort of purpose for for for, for Nana. And there was something in me that was like telling me like, yeah, you're here to support Nana. You're here to support her with something. So I so I didn't know, but I really like took that on him. I took I took the both the, the, the both things in in on my heart. At that time, you still weren't completely sure because I was saying these things and you're like, are you sure about this? And you weren't so sure about it. But I felt I've, I've, I felt very clear that there was like a deeper purpose. And it was like, really, I think that did come through the, 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 the true honesty because there was so much being like cleared from that to be really, really open and to be really, really transparent. Um, really clears a lot from your mind and then you can be you can be very very um, clear with one another and that was also one of the things for you because you, you I, I, I remember that you were you were right you, you would you would write all, all all of your thoughts and you say do you do you mind I, I remember one day you said I prefer to write I said yeah you can write every e e everything and so every day she would like write everything that was that, that was going on and that was like incredible just to be able yeah. to really do that no matter what it was in your mind no matter what it was we could share yeah so there was that I felt like I felt like that was the thing actually there was always this foundation of there was always this foundation of trust and so for me it's all it's it's been for a long time it has to be it has to serve the whole it's just yeah what's I have no, I have no desire in that way, uh, but something was calling me in this direction. But Nana wasn't completely sure of that at that time. Yeah, and there was just one other thing that I'd like to add that that came from that is um, when we first started speaking through that, it, it felt like Jesus's um, direction of this true honesty. So we took the idea from the get real. Was like, wow, this. It felt like everything had come together. So then we started sharing our thoughts. But then I was like, I felt like I needed to join jo join with someone about it and say, listen, is this is it is this actually okay? I don't want to be moving in any other direction. Um, so um, that's when I spoke with Frances, and I told Frances about what was happening. And she said, Oh my God, that actually feels really really it feels really good but let me speak with David and then she spoke with David and said yes it's for you two to share all, all of your thoughts so it came it really everything everything always comes from from a deeper prayer and a deeper purpose yeah you like you feel it if it's splitting off into some sort of specialness versus is it actually serving the whole so and of course at that time I thought well I, I don't know whether this is this is actually given or not yeah. so we really need to be prayerful on these things so it's not lightly that you start doing these types of things. It's not just that's like an everyday occurrence, really. Uh, yeah. And I have to say, like, at the beginning, I was like, you know, those course students, you read the course and it's like specialness and you feel like I don't want specialness. I don't want to I don't want to do anything with it. So I was like, at the beginning, I was like, I don't this want specialness. specialness. <laughs> so I had that too. Like I had to get over many things i think um to really open my mind so that was really really healing because i had a lot of fears and doubts about it i thought what is this for how things work how is it like is this even helpful is this distracting me from god that was my fear and my my doubts so that yeah 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 mm, thank you that's okay that's amazing i that's very helpful thank you mm. And I think this question about what is relationship is, it it's just that you, it isn't, there isn't. <laughs> There's no such thing. It's like, that's us trying to label it and put it in a box. It really um, has to be moment by moment. So. Yeah. so moving forward, when it came time to finally meet, yeah. That's where, for me, I would, uh, a lot of the specialness, physical body thing starts to come in and it gets really shaky. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit about, because I, I actually was with you on a retreat just before you went to, as we called it, pick up Nana. 
because mm. at that time you were saying, I'm going to go get Nana and then we're going to go off traveling. She doesn't, she doesn't think so yet, but I know we are. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe yeah. can you talk now about the next the next bit yeah i think the next bit was actually um we continued talking like online how long like a year or so maybe a year and a half, year and, a half. Maybe, yeah. and then um ken was going to start to travel with anna and then uh at that time i felt <laughs> i felt guided to actually stop communicating with him I felt like it was not helpful I didn't have any specific reason I, I remember that day when I shared uh, with Ken like oh, actually I failed to stop this communication I felt like some it was not me saying it, it was like mm. something else like it felt, felt like Jesus doing it so it's like it brought up so much emotion like mm. uh, I really felt it and I I had doubts coming up we had a call I remember and I shared with Ken, I really feel this is a direction we, we can't, uh, it's not given for us to continue communicating. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but now I, I feel to stop it. And after, after a call, I remember uh, the ego coming in like, you're going to be alone. This loneliness came out right away. You're going to be alone. What are you doing and everything? But I really felt to trust. Mm -hmm. And I think that that um i don't know changed a lot into, mm -hmm. it was really really helpful because at that time i yeah. can we are traveling and that mm -hmm. helped can to yeah. face many things like in terms of emotions and patterns mm -hmm. and beliefs in his mind mm -hmm. so that was like an intense year for can and then i was not quite sure whether it was like did i do the right thing and after a year i received the when Ken and Anna went to Mexico. They started sharing about their travels. Then I, after a year, I received the confirmation that, yes, you actually did the right thing because that allowed Ken to go through the healing. Uh, and also that allowed Ken and Anna to go their own healing because then I was not there. For, mm -hmm. Because usually at the beginning, Ken was talking to me instead of joining with Anna. He was talking to me, sharing all the things, you know, and it felt really good. But when I felt like, yeah. well, we need to stop this, then they had to go towards um, each other. So after a year, when I held all the stories and all the healings that they went through, I was like, <laughs> thank you, yeah. Jesus. Like, I almost like I received the confirmation. So I feel like this, that was an important time and important mm. part of, mm. of our joining together because a lot yeah. of things were coming up for you yeah yeah that was that, that that was that was huge it was like well just before that because we got so comfortable with sharing with one another and I thought wow this is incredible and so it it felt like I could literally face anything in my mind so I was praying like what's what's what, what's the biggest thing in my mind so um I I, I said well the, the the belief in abandonment and rejection is the biggest thing and nana had sent me a video she said oh here's this video you might want to watch so she i watched this video and i really really enjoyed it it was all about abandonment and healing it and everything and i thought yeah that's my that's my absolute nemesis so that night in bed i was traveling with anna i was in spain and i sat up and i obviously really said that prayer and i said um uh, everything's in place now i can really face this holy spirit bring it on and I said it with every fiber of my being and then a week later Nana says we're not to talk anymore and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> I want you to face this yeah, with you <laughs> yeah and then and then um Anna was like oh your prayer's been answered and I'm like oh my god so then that really made me face many things so it was actually huge because I had this idea that like there was this there was this deeper purpose um between us and also that I really felt that I was I was to be there for for Nana, and um, when she said no, I, you know, we need to part, so to speak, and we hadn't met in person. I was just like my ego just really got hold of me and was like, oh my god, did I make that whole thing up? You know, for a year and a half, this has been in my mind, and I really, really felt that was the direction. And then I was just hit with huge amount of guilt. It was just like the best thing that ever happened, really, quite frankly. But it was just like all of this guilt just came up. 
all of this shame, feeling completely abandoned. But in some respects, like I knew that it wasn't her abandoning me. It was like there was this deeper, of course, I kept projecting it onto her like, no, this is the direction, what's going on? But yet having to keep taking it away and then seeing all of my thoughts underneath all that abandonment, rejection, loneliness. And so it was just completely and utterly relentless. But somehow that was that was the way to get in touch with my emotions because I was so cut off from them really that I didn't really realize. And then the same thing was is because I was traveling with Anna, as as you said, I was I was I was relying on Nana. And really, it was actually it turned around, you know, so it's like this shows about like these seeming commitments that we have is commitment to healing. And so it was like, OK, we'd gone as far as we could with our dynamic there. And now it was like, now you need to face this over here with Anna. And so with Nana out of the picture, then that really made me and Anna have to focus on our relationship. And then that 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 healed that healed a tremendous amount. Because for me and Anna, for example, our dynamic was always like she saw me as the strong one and I wanted her to sort of join me. And the sort of the more I held the, the, the direction, so to speak, the more she fell into littleness. Yeah. So we could never, ever meet. But then because of all of these emotions, I couldn't I couldn't. I just couldn't make a decision. So then that was that that was the healing in that. So she basically nursed me through my emotions and was there for me for that. But then it was time for her to step up and it was like to sit for me to see her in a new light. So it was like Jesus was like the working with the configuration on a, on a such a deeper level. And I think without that, like this one, this one, this wouldn't be happening now. So that really, really took away all of like these huge attachments that, 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 that I felt that I had because I had someone to share all these thoughts with. And now I felt like that that was like gone and I felt like there was more to be shared. But that, but that, but that was the whole point to really face the deeper things. So it's always healing first. Yeah. And then to bring it to your question, like, then um, we did. I didn't even know if we would ever collaborate no. or join or meet. Uh, I did not have anything in mind, but I was still a part of the social media team. And then when Anna and Ken go, went back to Mexico, then it so happened then that um, Ken joined the social media again. And there, there was another round yeah. of healing because, yeah. okay, Ken still felt like I was like, probably you forgot about me it's there's not there is not gonna be anything there we are so clear we are so healed no, there is nothing there and after some time Ken was like for me nothing changed and I, was like, what? <laughs> and I thought that time was when I felt like Ken was coming towards me and I was like get away from me like what do you want from me so that was like it it brought up so much and I remember Ken sent me this message about something like praying together because we were like so much intensity came up and we we had these calls uh, and we were sharing all our thoughts and it felt so unstable like so so unstable we were like is this even right to do this thing like is this really even helpful yeah. for our mind yeah. so I remember he messaged me about something let's pray together let's join and I think I misunderstood it. The, the message was one sentence, but I got so angry. I got so angry. I was crying and I was saying to Jesus, this is not acceptable. Either he's going to leave the team or I'm going to leave the team. This, like, do something. And as I was angry and I was just talking to Jesus, all of a sudden something happened in my mind. It just opened and Jesus was like, it's not him. It's you. You are defensive. That's why you are angry. It's not him doing anything wrong. I was like, what? And at that moment, I also felt like received guidance from Jesus to go towards him. And for two days, I just cried <laughs> because of that. I didn't, I, because so, there was so much resistance. So this thick wall that I didn't, I felt like I would die if I would go in that direction. So I was like, that was like, go towards him. So in that moment, I said, I, I cried and cried, but I said, okay, Jesus, if you want me to do that, I'm going to do that. So I said, yes. And then that was a huge miracle for me because 
before, if I, when I was listening to Ken's talks, I couldn't really hear him. I had so much resistance. Like I, for me, everything that he was sharing was from the ego. Like I couldn't really hear him. And once I said yes to Jesus, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna run away. I'm not gonna like escape this. I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna go towards him. At least stay here. Then I started hearing him in a new light. I st started hearing the spirits through him, like these helpful things. And the whole new collaboration, whole new way of joining <laughs> came about. And I received so many gifts. Like I started seeing him in a new light. And that was like a huge thing. I was like, I never knew that that was on the other side of my resistance and on the, on the, on the other side of my fear. That was like, yeah, a huge thing. So then um, uh, the meeting thing actually did not came from, did not come from us. Actually, it was actually David saying, mm. because everyone was in prayer what they would do. And for the summer, Ken's mind was like, what am I going to do this summer? And he did not have any functions specifically that felt like helpful for him. And then of course, everyone's praying and David was praying. And then David said, ah, oh, like go and travel in Europe. And then he mentioned like me, uh, like go come towards mm. me and traveling together. That came from David. And when I first heard it, I was like, what? <laughs> I had to, I, it took some time, a week or so to open my mind to that as well, because I, I, I had so much fear about meeting. Like we, would we feel anything with each other or not? Or how would you, all these questions, you know? But then um, I remember we had the movie workshop and I don't remember what movie it was, but I really felt from Jesus that it was really given for Ken to come to Georgia. And then I also hear, I was hearing the word traveling, traveling, traveling. So suddenly in my mind, I knew that that was a step, but I couldn't really, it was too overwhelming to think that I would travel. So my first step was, okay, Ken is coming to Georgia. So that's how it came about, mm. really, the meeting thing, mm. like in person that came like things through prayer. Otherwise, I I needed to know that it was really given and it was not a personal decision, mm. because if it was if I felt that it was a personal decision, my mind was felt too unstable. So, mm. yeah, that was. Yeah. Well, I think I think that was like what happened for, for me, because when I came back um, to the community after the traveling, I was like, the last thing I want to do is be on the um, social media team because it felt like there was so much going on. And then it just like reconfigured around again. And then a friend said, why don't you join the social media team? And I was like, oh my God. But it was really, it was really interesting. So I always prayed. I said, okay, well, Jesus is up to you to bring us together. It's not, it's not, it's not up to me. And then, and then, and then, and then it did. So we, cho we, we chose to have a call before we would actually start and be part of the team again. And um, it was really like, it was an incredible experience because I was really seeing her completely new. It was like this, I was like, wow, she's completely different. I didn't see her as the, uh, as the past. And it was very, it was a very deep time. But then after that, this was, this, this, this was, this, this was a new, new phase in my healing of rejection yeah because now like it was seemingly being apart and, and facing the rejection and then basically it was then we were paired up to to work together and then you'd be like no like it'd be like monday or something i'll say hey let's join you and you'd be like yes i can speak to you on thursday and i'm like what the hell are we doing yeah. so it was really it was really funny and no matter what I did, so for Nana, it was to share all of her, all of her private thoughts still, all, all, all of the time. So I, I would say something, and then she'd be like, "I don't feel this," and and I would just get this attack, yeah. And I would just feel completely rejected. I would just feel complete shame. Um, all the all, all all the emotions were there. And I was like, my and, and complete wrongness in 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 in, in my mind that was just so out of proportion that I had to face. And so each time I was, I, 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 I would pray and I would just go through this, that, wow, Jesus, this is really, really intense, but I would pass through it. And that's when he gave me, that's when he gave me, that's when he gave me the message. I said to him, I said, I don't know how to do this. 
I need an answer. And I really didn't feel that I was getting an answer from him. And I said, I need a clear answer and I need it now. And um, that day he came through to me and he said, love fearlessly. And it was like, no matter what happened, you just keep you, 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 you just keep sharing whatever you're sharing. So it was like, it was seemingly as if these guidances were, were different, yeah? Nana had her response and I had my response and mine was, and then afterwards, so I would respond with something, hey, maybe this is helpful. It was ma mainly about the function or whatever or, or being supportive. And if it felt like I was coming forward being supportive, she was like, this is not helpful. Yeah. So I would feel these feelings and I'd say, oh my God, Jesus, I really felt like this was, you know, a, a beautiful message like coming from you and I'm just getting slammed in the face. And then Jesus said, yes, but can you love a little more? And that's what he was teaching me over and over again. He said, yeah, the door will be slammed in your face many times, but can you love again? Can you open your heart again? This is the this is the practice. And in that, it's like not about getting anything. And so it really was interesting because then I was hearing these guidances to, to respond to her. So she might share something and I'd be like, oh, hey, I found this helpful. And then it would happen again. <laughs> so <laughs> we came back together, but now our dynamic was playing out. And it was really for you to be really, really honest in how you were feeling was really important to yeah, you. Yeah, I think that was like what uh, we say sometimes, like uh, say no and mean it and say yes and mean it. I, I think that was my lesson, like to be really, really clear how I felt. And I could see that I had, I was afraid and I was like, I was really, really defensive. I could see it, but at the same time, like when I would push myself, like, for example, like Ken would love to have a call every day. And that was too much for me. Whenever he would come too close to me, I would like, like I would freak out. So I was watching my mind doing that. So if I pushed myself, it felt like an abuse in my mind. So almost like I learned to say, okay, today we had a call. If we have a call tomorrow, that will be too much for me. So almost like I learned to share exactly how it felt for me and what felt supportive and what felt helpful for me. And of course, like when you say, oh, I don't want to have a call with you today because yesterday we had a call and it will be mm. too much for me. Then that was like, mm. for Ken, it was a rejection. But for me, I always like to be clear and to almost like not to or force myself to do something that feels too much for me. So it was all like, accepting like letting go of judgment towards myself and accepting the way where I was and the way I felt mm -hmm. and also like clearly communicate what felt supportive for me in that moment mm -hmm. and also like I remember he shared this beautiful message about gentleness I think I I shared with Ken that my <laughs> prayer was for gentleness and he's he wrote this beautiful email with different quotes and with different pictures and with different songs about gentleness. And he sent it and I got so angry. <laughs> I was like furious. I was so, so angry. And I was like, ah. I was like that. And I just sent the message, like exactly how I felt. I just wrote everything. And it, part of me was like, oh, this is so cr cruel. Like he did not really do anything wrong, but that's how it felt for me. So I just shared it with him and he was like, I didn't really expect that. <laughs> so it was like almost like for me, my lesson was to communicate exactly how I felt and to share this is not feels this doesn't feel helpful for me and this is how it feels. So that was my lesson for you is almost mm -hmm. like to stay with love and to stay with giving. And it did seem like we felt different things, mm -hmm. but it was all perfect for the healing that we mm -hmm. uh, needed to go yeah, through. Lesson, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually that was that that was the most he that was the most healing thing because of course every time it seems like that something was 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 going wrong, but then in that message, when I sent that message, I knew like this isn't this isn't about anything like some somehow I was able to remove myself from it like this is completely disproportionate to what I sent yeah, and then I could see that like it was like this ego trick in my mind just keep playing out this this um attack really in my own mind and my own my own judgments and my own rejection and then I could remove myself from it 
and then I felt like that's actually that's actually when things shifted in in my mind because it was almost like when something was said it felt so per it felt like such a personal attack on me that I was completely destroyed and then Jesus was like yes okay now you're gonna share this thing and I'm like it's probably not gonna go well but I'm trusting with it maybe it will this time yes and I and I would really feel it in my heart and Oh, I'm really no, and I, so we really, so both of us really, really had to be prayerful on 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 where we on where we were at. That was vitally, vitally important. And so I would deeply pray, and I'd say, "Yes, I feel this," and then something would come. But after that message, then whatever came back, it was like I knew, like I I let go of something, so then I wasn't I was I wasn't being affected by it any longer. So I was like, it was it was it was beautiful in my mind, and I was. I was eternally grateful for that. It was like, wow, nothing was yeah. really ever going wrong. It was incredible. And yeah. I just had to continue to love. And it was almost like Jesus was really that that model in my mind. And I was thinking, wow, well, look what he went through. And he still continued to love in every situation. He's like, yeah, this is what it's going to take in the face of whatever. So I was like, okay, this is this is the lesson. Yeah, I think in my mind, what I saw, what now that I reflect back, what I see that, it's almost like I was so afraid of connection and deepening. And at the same time, I I knew that there was these layers of hatred, like not personal hatred, but mm. some kind of layers of hatred and anger. Mm. And I, I remember I think at some point I thought, if I want to really have this closer relationship like joining, first I need to release this anger and hatred. And I think that's what happened with us. Like mm. all this oh, stuff came up in my mind, like, and I had to release that in order to mm. receive the guidance from yeah. Jesus. Okay, yes, Ken is going to come to Georgia. Yes, you're going to travel with him. I think without releasing that anger mm. and hatred and all these thoughts, I would not be able to mm. accept, to say yes, honestly, to to to, to take that into my heart yeah. and say, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and to commit like mm. together doing this because otherwise it would be like unstable mm. so i feel i feel like it was really helpful for me to just let it out and just share mm. whatever and as actually at the beginning at that time it didn't feel helpful but then mm. that happened to also trust as well and yesterday i was saying to Ken, i was like i don't feel like there is anything i would not share with you because like you are the one that i shared everything with like i don't mm. have any um mm. like consciously i don't have anything hidden and i feel like i can if there is something coming up i can always share mm. so yeah i feel like that was helpful mm. yeah so i was just thinking uh usually i would ask everybody who comes to what does the phrase holy relationship mean but i'm not going to ask you guys because i think you guys just explained it all beautifully i think just what stands out is how, how for clearly in your relationship, this is always about each individual relationship with Jesus. It's not about trying to maintain a relationship between the two of you. It's always about the going, what is given, what is the guidance and just I'm always so impressed with Nana, how she's, I mean, re she really just, whatever the guidance is, she's doing it. And I just, I mean, so many, so many of us, I think, faced with something like stop communicating with him, like to really trust that and not try to hold on to the person. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's a beautiful example of truly, it's not about a relationship between a man and a woman it's your relationship with jesus and listening and following together and this is how you can commit together and through this um agreement of honesty that's a beautiful way to do it and so brave because i think you're really trusting jesus and spirit you're really trusting that in, instead of trying to trust a person you're you're trusting that that, that everything is perfect how it's going and I love hearing that you guys have doubts sometimes that's very helpful like is something going wrong because we're always feeling that like 
this doesn't feel good is it wrong <laughs> yeah like all of that really you know like reflecting we always said that like wow I'm so grateful that we actually did all this online I never felt I've never really felt much hatred towards Nana of course we we've had our differences <laughs> but um that's not really been like so up in so up in my mind so it was always easy to to come back and to to really be in prayer and I think you're right that was that 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 was the thing is we both want the same thing there's no there's nothing there's nothing else I know she doesn't really desire this world and I know that what she wants and I know that we both want to pray deeply so when you've got that it always comes back to that foundation and then it, it's really, really more about the healing that needs to take place. So then when you take it off of that personal, then it actually becomes much, much more easier. It's much, much more restful. It's actually, it's actually incredible that you have the same desire. Yeah, I think as you said, like I couldn't really trust Ken because I could come up with so many stories about him. Oh, he, he wants a special relationship. He wants to like <laughs> suspiciousness and everything. I couldn't really trust him. But then I could trust Jesus it, when the direction was given. I could, okay, I have no other way. Like, I, I want to really, really find out. Like, I remember when I was still in Georgia and he he was coming, but I was lying on a bed and I was thinking about it and I felt so much fear, so, so much fear. I, I was like, if I go towards this, I felt like I would die. Then I was like, oh, why do I feel this way? Like, I want to, if Jesus says, like, there is nothing to fear. I was like, I want to actually find out that there is nothing to fear. So mm. I would rather go towards this darkness. Like that's how it felt. Darkness mm -hmm. and find out what's going to happen rather than, oh, this story that the ego is giving us. Like, this is dark. You don't go, you don't need to go there. It's, it's like, if you go there, you will never come back. You will never survive this. That's how it felt. Like, so intense. And I was mm. like, okay, I want to find out that there is nothing to fear. So I'm, I want to go towards uh, this and I want to take that leap. But it's definitely, I was trusting Jesus that this mm. was a direction even now. Like, mm. I think, and I don't, like we, we still go through healing and I, I, I still sometimes feel intensity, but I, don't, I never feel like, oh, this is, I'm going to end this because I said to yes to Jesus. So it's mm. never that personal. It's almost like that the purpose of healing is up front mm. always. So yeah yeah it's definitely yeah. trusting jesus yeah and it i mean there is some trust of ken in that yeah, you're sharing your most uh you're sharing things that he could totally reject you for sharing <laughs> you know it's, it's and he's trusting you so there is some personal trust but even that is given to jesus like do i trust this for, you know should i trust can i say everything so it always it's always because that's something we talk about in the world a lot is be careful who you talk to, only trust certain people. But even that, we don't have to decide. It's, we can just pray on it and say, I, I feel to share everything. We're saying this, is this right? So, yeah, so it's beautiful. Yeah, wonderful. Just, uh, so our first meet, so our first meeting in person, like now, like really, uh, most of our difficulties I feel were probably let go of then so then it was like more of a deeper purpose about being together because I think being together and dealing with all those things the, the hatred and everything could have been pretty intense so I can see how perfectly Jesus set that up and when we when we first met in Georgia where we were staying there's um, a beautiful church is it Trinity? Trinity Church. Yeah, yes. it's called Trinity Church, and I saw it. I was, oh my God, I love, I, I love, I love that church. It's just incredible up on this mountain, and so that was really in my mind. And so I flew four hours to to get to Georgia. I felt good, and I got to meet Nana. She couldn't believe that I was that I was his. Oh my God, he's here. And so, 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 so we just sat together, and it was a bit, it was a bit nerve wracking at that time. You're like, wow. So it was it, it was interesting to finally. So now this is like two and a half years. Now finally, after two and a half years, we we, we sort of like meet for the first time, and um, so we were we were in we, we were in the house, and then and I said, "Would you like to go to the church? I'd like to go to the church." And she she said, "Yeah," and that was like an that that was like an incredible experience um, for us. 
um, we went to the church. So she said, okay. And she said, well, actually this church was pretty significant for you as well. I didn't, I didn't, mm. I, I, I didn't know that. Did you want, did you want to share the significance of the church? Well, that, that, well, whenever I would feel upset and lost in before the course and before everything, like I, I feel like whenever I wanted to get close to God or feel the closeness of Jesus, I, I would go to that church and pray. Like the, the really like vital, a challenging times in my life when I felt really, really lost. I would go there and I always felt like home, you know, just, just presence was just there for me. So that was like, a, mm. yeah, it felt like home. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like something that was like symbolizing God. Yeah. yeah and i never so I, I i never knew i never knew this and it's up on top of the hill it's very very beautiful so we go up there and it's very spectacular and we go in i think it was probably the first orthodox church i've ever been into and um we went in there and nana said oh we can go around and light candles so and you can give them to the saints what you feel drawn to so okay wonderful so we we went round and we were we were we were pre we were praying on each one to the different ones and right in the center is a huge jesus that is he sort of curves up onto the curve of the curve of the roof and he's absolutely massive but that area was actually sectioned off so you could see it from a distance but you couldn't you couldn't see it closely and we were going around and then we got to the saint nino didn't we nino nino who is the saint of um georgia and she said oh this is the saint of georgia so we were stood there and then all of a sudden this woman came over and she started speaking to nana in 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 georgian and did she ask did she say where am i from or something where yes she asked where we were from and i said oh i'm from here and he's from uh uk and she was like what are you doing like let him in like that sectioned uh, sectioned off part yeah. like let him in show let let him see it properly yeah. and he just opened that sectioned off uh, part yeah. and he just she get, was just like yeah get in like, yeah. get to jesus <laughs> it was like we were being ushered to jesus it was like, it was it was incredible so yeah she undone the she she, un, she undone the rope and she said that that cross is from Jerusalem. <laughs> he needs to see it. That, this is fourth century. You know? <laughs> she was like, she, she knew everything. Get in there. So then the next minute, we're like, wow, this is incredible. And then we just have the huge, great Jesus. And then there's just us two with, with, with Jesus. And then afterwards, we sat outside and the whole place lights up. They light it up in, gold, in a gold color. And we just stayed there and it was like something happened to you wasn't it it's like you 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 had like a you had a beautiful experience of i think uh when when we were inside usually orthodox church has a lot of icons we don't really have much statues but icons and there was one that i always loved of jesus mm. and i was just stand, standing there and i just felt so 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 much mm. gratitude you know for my life mm. for the path for another way for mm. all the gifts i received that so that was such a deep experience for me, almost like a reminder that he he was always with me and yeah. he was always guiding me. Mm. So yeah, that felt really, really deep. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt like Jesus was there with us, wasn't it? It's like this is this is this is all yeah, for Jesus. Was almost like, yes, go yeah, in. <laughs> yeah, go in. And that and that, and that was it really. Yeah. And then and then the and then the same then the same thing really occurred. In some respects, it wasn't it wasn't much different than than than, than being online. Because then we then we had, then we had to share our share our thoughts again, and so then we were we were up to like Nana was used to staying up late, and I wasn't used to staying up as late as her because she's like three a.m. in the morning, and then like by about twelve at night she was like warmed up, and she's like I've got some thoughts, and I'm like. <laughs> Okay, then let's do this. Like she's going at it for two hours. I'm like sitting there. She's like really like warmed up. I'm like yeah, and then this happened. And then I've got all these thoughts. She's like, are you tired? I'm like, no, no, no. Carry, carry on. She was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, so this and I would really cry. Bad. She's and crying. It's like two a.m. <laughs> she want a cup of tea. I'm like, it's two a.m. <laughs> so it was. But, that, but I was really, I really enjoyed that as well, though, because it was like, ah, oh, this is stretching me. And sometimes we would go to like 4 a.m. She would share, we, 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 we would share what was happening. So it was really that, 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 that always, that always continued on, really. Yeah. So it's been interesting. Yeah. So that's been, 
that's been important to us to keep our our minds clean and that just that just sort of like naturally that naturally happened didn't it yeah that comes really natural for me some people have problem with communicating i over communicate that has been healing for us during yeah. the traveling because i find it's really easy to share all the thoughts you know what when i had that call i felt mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. and i would share but then like for me like now can feel stable in his mind and i am actually facing abandonment rejection but for me it doesn't take much to feel rejected if it's like if i'm sharing something and then all of a sudden he looks at his phone i just feel rejected <laughs> and i'm like the, the first response is to shut down you know and i'm like oh and i had this period when i felt over and over again whenever i would share i felt rejected over and over again and it's mm. even the way he was looking or the way he was it's like so simple for me to feel that the rejection and i was like over and over i would bring myself to share again and again and again and i reached the point when it was too much i was like this i can't do this anymore and i was like praying and praying and praying and all of a sudden i realized okay i'm not gonna share anything anymore <laughs> like mm-hmm. i'm not gonna communicate and then actually that seems to be the guidance because almost like what happened to me when we started traveling and we, we started joining almost like i was communicating with him mm-hmm. all the time like sharing all the thoughts and almost like i lost this um uh, i didn't lose connection but i was not going towards jesus you know instead i was going towards him so that I felt so intense. I was perceiving him rejecting me, but then it ended up being actually the guidance. First, join with Jesus within, and then if it's guided and if it's really given, then communicate with him. So that was like a huge healing around communication for me. It all comes to communication for me. It brings out a lot, but almost like it's not even personal, personal, person Mm -hmm. communicating to person. It has to come first with Jesus. And then actually, as soon as I said, I'm not going to communicate with him anymore, actually, that pushed me to go towards Jesus. And I was like, oh, my God, I completely forgot that I first needs to need to nurture this connection with Jesus. And then if it comes about that I need to share something, it is still shared. But first it comes to Jesus. So that has been like a healing for me, like rejection, abandonment, mm. communication, that those kind of things are still coming up. And I think another topic that is really I mean, I've been sharing with him is like a, this I like this desire to get you know and expectations like tiny things like if he if I I may have the idea that he would give me like bring me a coffee and he does not and then I feel upset and I feel just getting and I feel like he's doing something wrong so that has been like yeah I have times when it comes like really int- intensely like this desire to get. And this desire for him to do something specifically, so I want him to do it. And then, it's, of <laughs> course, it doesn't work. It never works. So, yeah, that is that has been really, really healing for me. And it's like to see all this getting because I did. I never had the conscious relationship before when I was able. I would be able to see this getting. And now, when I see this, and I'm like. I see like playing that role and I'm like, here, here we go, Nana, playing the victim again. And I can't stop it. I need to play it out. But seeing myself doing it over and over again for tiny things, it's so, so healing. But at the same time, it does feel sometimes intense. And then, then the teachings from the course come like, whatever you feel is lacking is what you are not giving. So this is the opportunity for you to give actually. And then I was, I'm like, I don't feel that I can give and such a turnaround in my mind such a huge shift like you want to get and all of a sudden Jesus says actually it's for you to give and so it like it stretches my mind so much but it's almost like yeah whatever is happening whenever I'm upset it's almost like Mm -hmm. no it's for you to see the Christ in him so it's like a choice again and again and again and it's such a uh, wash for my mind yeah so but uh, i don't know can feels more stable this time <laughs> because i guess he washed away many things through through the journey and now it's like <laughs> i'm washing away these tiny thoughts you know and really really mm-hmm. to accept that it's actually relationships are forgiving and to release all the expectations and all the ideas that mm-hmm. it's like i was saying to him if i think that we have a relationship then all these ideas come in but if i release that then it's like 
I can feel the freedom. So it always comes that comes back to that purpose of actually my purpose is to see the Christ with him. Mm. So it does bring up a lot, but it's also rewarding. When you can make the decision, it is really, really re rewarding and it feels really, really beautiful and there is mm. so much gratitude. But then it, it, it is definitely a wash and continual healing. It's not that I'm like, oh, it's a holy relationship and it's done. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not for me, yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Ken, did you have anything to share about that time? Um yeah, I think we we reflected last night actually, and um she Nana was asking me, Do you feel do you feel about getting is this in your mind? And it and it was interesting to see that I, I, I felt like it wasn't it wasn't so much um in my mind. But I want to pray about that just to, just to see. But yeah, I haven't felt that, and I and I, and I have felt more more secure in things. So that's been that's been an interesting um, thing that's played out really. And now I'm seeing it as we're talking. It's like, well, maybe that maybe there was a deeper healing um, for me than than I imagined because I felt quite I felt quite I felt quite secure, <laughs> which is it which is interesting for me. Because normally I don't do well in relationships. I find I, I always found them very challenging. But in this, I felt I have definitely felt felt stable mm. um, in that. And of course, at times there are getting. I think there's like the the idea of not being supported. That's just like one one idea. That's like one of the things that we that, that we that we that we talk that we talk about. Um. But as far as like getting something from you, I don't, I don't always, I don't actually feel that. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's really painful when you want to get yeah. something. It's so painful. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, I did have a few questions written in for you guys. And yeah. anybody who's watching, if you have some questions you can dm me on facebook or instagram or put them in the comments or and let me know if you want it to be anonymous and i will ask questions directly to the guests so here we go first question hi jean i have been addressing an issue i would like ken and nana to share about I have a hard time with the idea of having sex again. To me, it seemed always a way to avoid true intimacy. The last time I was in bed with a man, I ended up shocked. This seems to happen to me whenever I get close to men. Honestly, I don't know how to forgive myself for this pattern. Maybe they can shed some light on that issue. that's it's like i don't know it's like it's not really the purpose is it yeah i think in and of itself nothing is going wrong even if you feel intensity there is nothing wrong if you think if you look at everything from the point of healing then everything that happens mm. is really perfect for that healing to look at your mind and to see what are the thoughts and what are it's like even the idea that uh sex is a way to avoid uh, intimacy you are still giving it reality so it doesn't really matter where you feel like it's a good thing or it's a bad thing it's mm. the same judgment so i would like i, I would feel mm. I, it's like a matter of guidance really and mm. being clear how you feel mm. and maybe you don't really feel to have sex and maybe if you push yourself then you have that kind of experience so mm. if you if it does not feel helpful for you or if you don't feel like it then maybe it's about communicating mm. clearly how you feel and what mm. is helpful and as i shared that has been my path like i feel like mm. i came uh, I, my guidance became more clear for me as I practiced sharing exactly how I felt always in a relationship. So it comes no matter what what it's really about, no matter what is the mm -hmm. theme within a relationship. It's always to be really clear within yourself and then to say and to express how you feel. So in and of itself, doing something or not doing something mm -hmm. does not really make much difference, but it's almost like how you feel. It's, mm -hmm. Do you really feel 
doing it or not mm. i feel like that's that's the most important thing and then sharing and communicating that and yeah. having like a purpose up front mm. that you want to look at it's not that to have a nice experience it's almost like to see whatever is in mm. your mind that's the purpose mm. really for everything yeah that's it because it brings up so much stuff and obviously like in this situation there's that, that there's there's so many thoughts guilt and everything so really every every everything that we do is exactly the same thing it's only it's only for healing and then of course this is sort of like an area where it can bring up shame guilt embarrassment hatred all of these things and you know then it can be like covered up in like the the, the act seemingly to almost like relieve something instead of saying or speaking up saying exactly how you feel it can be an area for compromise so it's the same as everything really like it's just it's it's, it's another area to really really speak about that and she said she felt re re repelled by the by the situation and it's like if it's for healing it's like the same it's always it's, it's always for that it's it's, it's, it's for healing only and if you can remember that, then you have a you have a you have a higher purpose for everything to show you the blocks to the awareness of love's love's presence. But if it's like the act within itself, like this is you know, you you hear this all the time, and like people say, oh, how many times should we have sex a week? I said, I think it's about twice a week. Okay, right. So we've got to have sex twice a week. You know, there's like these things that this is a very important part of the relationship whereas for us it's not really an important it's not important it's not really important it's not it's not like up in our it's very rarely up in our awareness it's not like a it's not like a huge thing because really it's about it's, it's about it's about the healing so i think that yeah we we put a lot of emphasis on it and that's why i always love krishnamurti he said why do you want to talk about this all the time people would always ask him the questions they said he said do it don't do it just get on with it but i think it's like the the guilt and the feelings underneath it and the shame is really what needs to be um faced so it can be a be it can be a beautiful thing um for that versus some sort of outcome some sort of pleasure some sort of um getting mechanism that's underneath the whole thing yeah and so I for me, it's like, even because it's like a, we are like a programmed, <laughs> our mind is programmed to feel shameful or more insecure about certain topics. So whenever something comes up, like about physical intimacy, and it's like, I always find it refreshing to, just to share how I feel. And I'm like, this is how I feel. And then can share his thoughts. And this is, it's like, so because in my mind, like, it's not a, is accepted to talk about those things even in relationships so just mm. to be able to share about it it feels so i right away i feel like lightness mm. around the topic so i feel like it's more about prayer to use everything for that healing and if something feels intense and you don't mm. really feel to have sex and don't feel sex like mm. don't like push yourself too much either but it's all it's it comes down to watching your mind and being mm. mindful yeah. and using everything to see what are the thoughts beliefs around anything really yeah all these shits and things like this yeah yeah it's really deep thank you thank you and i'm just curious now how how has it been in your lives <laughs> you hear people talk a lot about patterns is that a helpful concept? It, sometimes it seems like it makes it more real to us. Like, well, I have this pattern and I'm, you know, so I have to live with this pattern instead of, you know, actually facing it, just making it more real. Do you find it useful to notice, point out, define your patterns or does it depend on the situation? Sometimes for me, I see, I, I see these loops in my mind and then it's like, wow, this is like playing out again. And really, it's really to continuously hand it over to the, to, the, to the Holy Spirit, really. That's the most important thing. Like, I don't know. And it's, and it's true to not allow that to define you. Because, of course, that's almost like psychotherapy, find the problem and then, and then heal the problem. But it's not really, it's not really, really a problem. But it's also important to, to, to see it like certain things that, 
guilt loops or, or or whatever like why am I in this scenario why am I in this scenario again and then why am I thinking in this in 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 this in this way and then to release it yeah it's it all comes down to the what Jesus says it's just an interpretation it's not really happening mm. the experience is not really like that you're just interpreting you're yeah. just choosing to feel like that and for me it has been like part of like saying, oh, this is my oh, part and it has been helpful in terms of become mindful. Mm. But I think at the beginning, I noticed like I had that with unworthiness. I would say, oh, I just feel so unworthy. And it's almost like it became part of my self-concept. And then I learned to even question that. Okay, I feel like I have this pattern of unworthiness, but I don't really know. <laughs> it may not be the case. So I always leave the, the open space for Jesus to say, oh, may, I may be actually wrong about this. And actually looking at our mind, at our patterns, the purpose of it is to let it go, to be wrong about what you see in your mind rather than like, this is my pattern. And I've seen that through trials, like people find things in their mind and then define it and then limit themselves and feel like, oh, I have this pattern and this is why I can follow guidance. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not the purpose of looking at your mind. Looking at your mind is actually to see something, but being wrong about it, because in truth, you are the Christ. So we mm -hmm. want to be wrong about these patterns. And I've had that with fear as well. I would feel all this intense fear. And I'm like, is this really the truth, actually? Is this really the truth that I feel unworthy? And I, I have been shown over and over again that it's not actually true. I, I'm not actually afraid. So almost like if you see something, then you can give it over to Jesus and say, I see this, but I want to be wrong about this. So you guide me. I don't want this you to use this to stop me, basically, to stop uh, feeling happy or joyful. So it's almost like you look at it to be wrong about it, yeah. not to yeah. define and become like it to become your self-concept. Yeah. And I also, I, I also see it as like as a choice. So when I see these things, if I see it again, it's like, wow, this is my choice. And then I'm taking back that power in my own mind that there is another decision in my own mind to release this. So it's like, this is my choice. So then I take the power of it and then I can release it from that. Because I'm like, wow, this is me. Because often it's like, um, it's almost like out there or something, but to really see it and say, do I really want this? Do I, re do I really want to hand this over? And then that's when we can be released and say, it's up to, it's up to you to heal this because I have no idea, but let's keep seeing it and giving it to him. Okay. Another question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Dear Ken and Nana, how to respond to jealousy? In my spiritual practice, I tried to go towards that which upsets me so as not to push it down. When it comes to jealousy, though, I am so ashamed of it because I know it is uncalled for, that it is my desire for specialness and that I'm comparing myself to other men my partner is interacting with. Mm -hmm. When I think of her with another man, I am so full of rage. I feel I should be beyond this by now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think actually in that just that being shared is 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 is, is incredible, yeah. And it's like one and it it's like one of those things that we want to keep hidden as if there's actually something going wrong, as if it's shameful. And also like I should be further, I should be further along. And I think it's really good to kind of stop that and be like, whatever's gonna come up today is gonna is is gonna come up. How do I how do I know what's gonna what what what's gonna happen? And it's coming up for a reason. It's actually coming up because um you want it to be healed. So I've seen that. I've 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 seen that in my my mind. Um and it seems like I think I think the best way out of it is actually just to continue to express it. And for us, it was like, it was like, I think in relationships, when it becomes about the relationship, it becomes about maintaining the relationship. And like, oh my God, if I say this, they're going to say, you're always jealous. This feels controlling, blah, you know, all, all of the things that can come back at you. So then you fear that because like jealousy isn't a good thing. And it's one of those things that we, that we talk about a lot as not being helpful in the relationship and we shouldn't we shouldn't feel like this and yet you do at times and so for us it was always we always said something that it's not about the relationship it's always like 
even if this would be the most terrible thing, just share it, just share it any, anyway. Because it's like, if I have that thought, oh my God, I can't tell Nana because this isn't good for the relationship, then that's probably a good time to share it. And whatever's going to happen from that is going to happen. That's going to be more healing or we've been over this time and time again. Okay, well, whatever. Whatever needs to come up needs to come up. So I feel the more and more we share it, the more and more it actually starts to um, leave our minds. So yeah, not to beat ourselves up over feeling these things. There's probably other, there's other, there's other feelings underneath it, you know, insecurities and many things that have been there. They're actually nothing to do with what's going on, but it's just what we've believed in the mind. So I actually, I would actually, I would actually see it as a gift. And I and, 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 and I'm, I'm completely with them in this because I know that that's an emotion that feels really sort of sticky and very shaming actually to to feel to, to feel that and it can be really hard to talk about but I think the important thing is is if that's happening is you have to put the healing first in the relationship because if you haven't got that then it, that, that, then it does become about this um relationship of you're not doing this and this isn't right and you shouldn't be speaking to this one and you should you know and it changing their behavior it's like no this is coming up for the healing and it needs to be and it needs to be expressed and I think that's been like the important thing with us that we have felt um safe enough with one another to be able to actually do that so you always come back to the desire of what the relationship truly is yeah. Otherwise, you are just, the relationships becomes a goal, a goal and yeah. it's never it never feels good. So, yeah. if you can share and express with your partner or whoever there is to support you you in on this journey, like in terms of sharing thoughts where, wherever you feel safe to express it, with the purpose of taking responsibility for it as well, because otherwise yeah. it will not work. Uh, if you can express it, then that's the greatest gift and the greatest point of healing. Then the Jesus can come come through with um, with uh, like insights and with breakthroughs. Yeah. But sometimes we do it comes up over and over again. But you don't need to put it on a timeline yeah. either. Like with getting like I have mm -hmm. phases when it comes up. But if I say, oh, here it comes again, <laughs> if I, it's depressing, so don't just make sure not to use coarse ideas against yourself yeah. don't hurt yourself with those ideas just be kind to yourself and just take the step moment by moment whatever is coming up is perfect for that moment you don't have to think about the future or the past it's just happening now and that's what is um to be released right now yeah dear ken i was getting a lot of recommendations from friends to sign up for dating sites but I have a belief they are not spiritual. I should wait for the right person to be given. And if the person isn't appearing, it is not meant to be. But I have been single for three years and really have a strong desire for a relationship. So I finally signed up and decided to pray before looking at the profiles. And it was actually fun. And I didn't see the women as just pictures anymore when I swipe left or right. There was a feeling. Many of the ones I said yes to were not my usual type. I also try to use the dates themselves as practice to see my judgments. I could see expectations and insecurities show up too. Sometimes I go with a really clear mind and get into giving mode. But I also know there are many times there are personal desires like sex or even just approval to be liked. Am I just kidding myself that dating sites can be used by spirit? Is it just me trying to make my own way? Yeah. Oh, that sounds all perfect to me. That sounds incredible. That that feels like a really good use of 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 the of the encounters, because that's really what they are, and they're showing you what's in your in in your mind. Um, and I think that we have so many thoughts. I've I actually I've spoke to loads of men about this um, over uh, over the travels. I said, "Is it?" Is, they asked me, "Is this is 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 this right?" And it's like if that's if if that's there, and and your and your prayers up front, 
then it's then it's incredible. We 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 cannot den- we cannot deny anything. We're not we're not here to deny. And even this idea of what 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 is spiritual? I I have absolutely no idea what that even means to be um spirit to be to be spiritual. But in this, it really feels like you you're being led and you're using it in such a in such a perfect way to see to see that getting to see the giving to see the state of mind. So. Yeah, I think I, I think I think that's wonderful that you have that um, prayer up front and even seeing, oh, these different holy encounters. I wouldn't move in this direction, but it's like there's always there, there's always healing from it. I had a I had a guy who said, he said, can I be really honest with you? And I said, yeah, absolutely. He said, I just want to have sex with girls, but this isn't spiritual. And I said, well, what's up? Well, what's up with that then? And he goes, well, that's not spiritual, is it? And I said, well, how do you? I said, how, how do you know? And he goes, well, what, what, what do you mean? And I said, well, the thing is, I said, every relationship, no matter like what you talked about, we're all we're all in relationship. I said, no matter what is going to happen in a relationship, it's going to bring up healing. Yeah. So how do you know what this desire is for to open your heart in? in in many in many ways and to see the blocks to the awareness of love's presence so how can you judge whether that's whether that's right or wrong and he was extremely grateful for that i said how how do i know i can't we can't we cannot judge for what that is and if there feels like there's some sort of lack you can't be just going on the spiritual journey in some sort of lack and some sort of sacri- sacrifice. It's actually it's actually about being honest. So I I actually admire your honesty and how and how you're using it. So it feels really great to me. Yeah, keep going in that direction. Keep swiping left and, and right. Yeah, and the thing the, the thing is is what 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 I always do with with, with Jesus on the on, on these things. I say make it so obvious on how I feel. Yeah, make it so so obvious, and if sometimes there's a nervousness with it and there's a bit of fear but there's still this openness to it yeah okay this is still the direction but really make it obvious when i'm done when when i'm done with this isn't and this isn't the direction and i really feel that inside like everything is like stopping me in that direction so it's really really listening to how i feel like okay this is this is done now so i always put everything on to jesus and say okay you you guide me you tell me when to stop you tell me when to when when to carry on going when it feels good and when it doesn't feel good and you can fully fully trust that that's one of the things i really love about the course is that it, it's never telling us what to do in form it's there are no rules about the world the the dream there's no so anytime I have a question about the form it's like very easy to say wait wait the course isn't teaching me about behavior in form it's always about the mind and just yeah. get back there yeah yeah, yeah it's oh. like having that having that prayer for it to be for the mind and then it will be completely and utterly obvious as the direction that you want to go in. And it's like we're 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 using that muscle. Really make it obvious for me, Jesus. Really, really, really use it for me so I can so I can heal my mind and I can and, and I can see 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 these thoughts. And what Jesus always really, really showed me, which is the whole book, he says, don't judge. <laughs> that's that's the that, that's the whole book. Don't judge. We cannot judge ourselves. So if we have things on our list and we say, this is really important to me, this is what most people do. Almost every house I go to, they say, they, they go, right, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I want this. But the thing is, it's not spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, what is spiritual? How do, how do I know? How, how, do, how do we know that this isn't the direction to, to move in this direction? And it's it's for your mind. So if you put your mind into it, then the lessons will 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 come in such a in such a beautiful way. But it's often that we're denying things that actually is a direction to heal you. That's actually where the fear is. We're, we, we fear the healing. We fear actual love, and we disguise it under this is not the direction because it's not spiritual. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jean.
I look forward to watching this again. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was a lot of really helpful yeah. stuff in there. It just it, it's really confirming in my mind how helpful it is to share with each other our experiences. You've, you've kind of boosted me again. Like, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And it was it was good for us because we haven't really shared. This is the first time we kept talking about it. We kept saying, oh, we're we supposed to share about our relationship. And it's never really happened, does it? It's not been, it just hasn't happened. So we're grateful for you to actually give us the prompt to say, okay. So it was really like helped us because last night we were feeling, we were feeling grateful again, weren't we? Yeah, Ken was like, oh, I feel so grateful for Jane. It gave me the opportunity to reflect on things, mm. you know? It's like you can just move on so fast. Yeah. Like we want it's to appreciate time. each other. So yeah. thank you for giving us the space to share. Yeah. There may be an episode two, Ken and Nana, because yeah. we did we yeah. get back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure yeah, we're absolutely up for that. Mm -hmm.